In the previous video, we learned that generators are machines that convert mechanical energy into electrical energy. We also learned that they operate on the principle, which is basically the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. And it's all about relative motion between a magnetic field created by magnets and a coil, or in this case, an armature. When there's relative movement or motion, this creates a changing magnetic flux, which enables an EMF, a voltage to be induced or created and that creates or induces a current inside the coil which we can then use to power appliances or light up a light bulb we also learned about the different components of generators and their functions so if you missed all of that go watch the previous video in this video we're going to go over ac versus dc generators the different functions and components and in pre in videos to come we're going to go over how to use the right hand rule to, the, to determine the direction of our induced current. So the visible difference between an AC generator versus a DC generator is the use of either slip rings. So slip rings, that would be AC, that would create an AC generator, and then a split ring commutator, also sometimes just referred to as split rings, but split ring commutator is better. That would be a DC generator. And you can see here on my screen what they look like. So slip rings here slip onto either end of the coil. Here we got two slip rings and here is a split ring commutator. Think of it as one thing that is split down the middle. The first thing I want you to understand is what is the difference between alternating current and direct current? So when you think of alternating, the word alternate means to change, right? So alternating current, think of that. And direct current, think of current in one direction, essentially. So if I take a look at my simulation, can you see that I'm now using slip rings? Okay, not the split ring, I'm using slip rings. So this represents an AC generator. Let's start the simulation and see what's going on over here. If I start the simulation, we can even put in the direction of the movement of the coil, the armature. I want you to take note of the following. Firstly, let's make it go a little bit faster. Firstly, take a look at the external circuit over here. I hope you can see that there's an arrow indicating the direction of the induced current in the external circuit. Can you see that the current is changing directions the whole time? It's going, let's see over here, it's going to the left, and then it's going to go to the right. You'll see the arrow flips in direction. And this corresponds to this nice little graph that I have up here. You can see that we reach a maximum voltage on the positive y-axis, then we go down and we reach a maximum voltage but on the negative axis so we reach a maximum then we go to zero reach a maximum go to zero reach a maximum but the whole time the directions are changing this is alternating current if i replace the slip rings with a split ring commutator you'll notice the following now it might not be as obvious but take a look at the direction of the current in the external circuit you can also take a look at the voltmeter it goes to a minimum and then to a maximum back to a minimum back to a maximum in one direction. And this is repeated, we can see that in the graph. We go to a minimum, zero, then to a maximum, but all in the same direction. And you can also see that here, the arrow in the external circuit is always pointing in one direction. This is known as direct current. So an AC generator makes use of slip rings and the current in the external circuit is continuously changing direction. A DC generator, uses a split ring commutator, and the current in the external circuit does not change direction. So here you can see an example of an AC generator. So it's basically the generator I showed you earlier. You can just see the entire generator. Please remember that there will be an external circuit over here. So maybe a resistor and maybe a voltmeter and so on like that. So it says the direction of the induced current changes with every half turn of the coil reversing after the coil has moved through the vertical position. I'll show you what this means now. This type of current is called alternating current. You can see when looking at the graph what we mean by the fact that it says the, the direction of the current reverses after the coil has moved through the vertical position. Now remember when the coil rotates, the magnetic field lines are, let's say that they're going this way. The coil is either going to be like this, allowing all of the magnetic field lines to pass through it, or it's going to be like this, cutting through all of the magnetic field lines. 
And that is represented by the different lines over here. So AB, that representing the coil being flat. And then AB like this, this one over here, represents the coil standing like this. And then it rotates to being flat. And then it rotates to standing vertically. You know what I mean? I can't rotate my arm like that. Let's use my calculator. So it would be over here, would be flat. Then it rotates to vertical. Then it goes back to flat. Then it goes back to vertical. And then it goes back to flat. And that's one full rotation. I hope that makes sense. Here is another image that might explain it or show it a little bit better. So it says here, the induced current and the induced EMF, both. EMF and current, the graphs will look similar. So you see here it says a graph of induced current would look the same, would follow the same trend. So if I had to draw a graph of induced current, it would look exactly the same. This axis would just say current measured in amperes, and this would be the different degrees. But the shape of the graph would be the same. This is when the coil is in a horizontal position. Now remember, there's going to be a magnet on the side and a magnet on the side, like a north and a south, and the lines are going to be going like this. So when this is the case, this is when the current is at a maximum, okay? The reason why is because, again, it's drawing the magnets north to south. The magnetic field lines go across like this, always from the north to the south. As you can see, because the quill is lying flat, like this, flat, it is cutting through all those magnetic field lines. So the change in magnetic flux is at its greatest, which means the induced EMF is at a maximum. But when it rotates, so remember, it's going to turn, it's going to rotate, it's rotating this way. Then suddenly it's going to be standing on its side in its vertical position. So basically we're going from this to this. Okay, when it's like this in its vertical position, the magnetic flux is zero and there's no voltage, no EMF and no current generated. The reason why is because, again, remember, there will be a magnet here, the north end, and there will be a magnet here, the south end. The magnetic field lines, all of those lines will be passing through the coil, not cutting it, passing through. So there's no change in magnetic flux. So this, let's color code it. This position over here corresponds to that, a maximum. Then when it's in its vertical position, we're at a zero. You see, V max is at a zero, no voltage. You would just read it off like that, a zero voltage. Then it's rotating again, it's flat again. But because this is alternating current, an AC generator, we're reaching a maximum, but in the negative direction. So this over here represents what we call V max. And so is this one, V max, but in opposite directions. And then again, it would reach a vertical where it's zero. And then again, it's back to where it started, where it's at a maximum in the original direction. So same graph. You need to know that. That is how we draw the graph. And here's another version of the same graph of an AC generator. How do I know it's AC? Because it reaches a maximum in one direction. Remember, that would be V max. And it reaches a maximum in the opposite direction. That would also be V max, but it would be in the opposite direction, so the negative direction. So that would be a negative value over there. Okay, now, how many waves we do depends on how many rotations that we do. So, and where we start the graph, so you would note, you would say, but ma'am, this graph looks different to this graph. The only reason it looks different, the only reason this one looks like a cos graph and this one looks like a sin graph or a sine graph is because it depends on where we start the rotation. So if we, and how many rotations we do. So if we started in a horizontal position, we're going to start with a maximum voltage. But over here, they obviously started it in a vertical position. So let's say this is A. A would be a vertical position like this. Then at B, it's lying flat. Then at C, let's say C's over there, it's in a vertical position again. And then if that's D, it's lying flat. I hope you know what I'm saying. And then E, again, it's zero, it's at a vertical position. And then F, it's lying flat. So you can see that it's two complete waves. So it's two complete rotations. So this one over here, is one wave. You can see that this is where it starts. So if I had to do it with you, okay, maybe we label the positions. Maybe that makes it easier. This is A, B, C, D, and E. So that would be A, B, C, D, and E. You'll see how it's one rotation. Okay, so follow what I'm doing. A, maximum voltage produced, maximum EMF induced. Then we're rotating it. B, 
zero voltage. C, okay, it hasn't done one full rotation. Remember, one full rotation would be like this. Look at how my buttons are facing up. Okay, my buttons are facing up. That's one full rotation. So let's see, this is A, B, C, my buttons aren't up yet, we haven't fully rotated, D, and E. There we go, back to the start, one full rotation. So one wave, basically. Okay, one full rotation. And then just remember, when it's horizontal, maximum EMF induced. When it's vertical, zero, zero magnetic flux, no voltage, no current. The graph starts up here at a maximum if our coil starts flat or horizontal, but our graph starts here at a, at a zero if our coil starts like this vertically. So if that's an AC generator, what is a DC generator? Direct current. Now remember, we need to replace the slip rings with a split ring commutator. That's the change we make to the component. The rest of the generator is the same, identical. The split ring commutator, what this does is it, is it makes sure that the direction of the induced current does not change with every half turn of the coil. It's called direct current. Okay, so this is what the graph looks like. And again, how the graph starts or where the curve starts depends on how the coil is rotated. So here it's starting at a maximum because the coil is laying in a horizontal position like this. But as soon as it rotates to a vertical position like this, we've got zero induced EMF, zero current. Then it's back to its horizontal, back to a maximum, vertical zero, back to a horizontal. So this would represent one full rotation. Or again, if we start with the, the coil in a vertical position, we start with zero voltage, then it's flat, so maximum voltage, then it's back to a vertical position, so zero, then it's flat, so maximum, and then back to its starting. So you can see that it's the same type of graph. It does not go below the x-axis because it's not an alternating current graph. The current does not change direction with every half turn of the coil. I also have some advantages of AC current. This is in your exam guidelines. You can be asked this. So one of the main things, that one of the main advantages is that AC voltages can be stepped up or down using transformers. So what this means is that we can make use of something called a step up transformer to increase the voltage or a step down transformer to decrease the voltage. So if your electricity is basically at a certain voltage and you want more or less voltage to suit a particular use, um, so maybe you want to send, send electricity long distances or maybe you want to use it safely in your home, which is obviously the goal, then the transformer will do it for us. So power stations basically make use of these step-up transformers to increase voltage so that electricity can travel long distances. And then when it gets close to our homes, they use step-down transformers to reduce the voltage so that it's safe for us to use in our homes and for our various appliances. And that's basically what the second bullet point says there as well. AC voltages can be transmitted over long distances after we step it up. And this allows us to minimize power loss due to heating. And it's easier and cheaper to convert AC to DC. And then AC motors produce a higher power output than our DC generators. And what types of uses do we have for AC generators? So in electrical power plants and diesel generators, we can use it in cars to recharge the battery while the car is being driven and in moving coil microphones. And what about DC generators? They use it in bicycle dynamo, so this powers up the bicycle's lights in torches to produce light. So I don't know if you've ever owned one of those wind-up torches um, that where you wind it, wind it, wind it. So mechanical energy converting into electrical energy and then battery charges. In videos coming up, we're going to be learning how to use the right-hand rule in order to determine the direction of induced current. I'll see you there. Bye, everyone.